Okay guys, so here we have the game stick controller gamepad. So it's basically a game stick with 40,000 games on it. Is it any good? Let's find out. Okay guys, so this is the GameStick X2, which I purchased from Amazon for about £40. There's two options, this is probably the, the option with 40,000 games on it, with this, the larger memory stick obviously. Um, I think the smaller memory card is about £30, but yeah, I've picked this up. It took about maybe less than a week to get here, I, I'm assuming it's probably came from China. It's basically a game stick. Now, I have looked at one of these before and the quality wasn't amazing. The gameplay was pretty poor. But I've heard some good things about this. Um, and I was hoping that it's certainly an improvement over the last one. Um, yeah, as I said, it's got 40,000 games already included. It's basically a game stick you plug into your TV. So let's get a quick unboxing. It's got Emulec 4.3 on it and you connect it to your TV and there's two control pads within the box. Let's get it opened up. When you open up, you're obviously greeted with the actual game stick itself, which is in a little packet. You've also got a little dongle that's included, which this is for the controller. So you put this into the game stick. Have a look at the game stick in a second. So we've got two of the usual joy pads that are included in the box. So it's the, your usual sort of knockoff PlayStation 2 controllers, um, which are actually quite good. They're, they're functional. I can see why they include them in here. You add your um, double A or sorry, triple A batteries, two of them into the back and they are good to go. And amazingly, they've included two in the box. There's also, this is the uh, cable that you need to uh, function. It's basically the power cable um, that plugs into the a game stick that powers the device. Yeah, it's basically your old style connections that you use to actually power the unit. And that's it. There's a sort of manual in there, but as usual, the manuals are completely useless. Let's have a look at the game stick. So this is the actual game stick. Um, it's got some vents here on the front. Game stick light. Don't know what the, why they put this nonsense on it. 3D, 8K, HD, absolute load of nonsense. Um, that's the where you put your sort of cable power into. Um, that's the memory card that's included. This is where you'd put your dongle to pick up the uh, joypads. Um, let's have a look at the memory card that's included in it. So the memory card included in it is, is 120, what does that say? 128 gig uh, memory card. It's a basic memory card. So you might want to think about swapping this um, anyway, but let's have a look at the actual device. So I'll take the top off. Um, take the top off and basically it's just an HDMI stick that you put into your device. Now, um, interestingly, I think, is there an extension? Yeah, there is an extension as well included in the box. What Sometimes, obviously, the, the HDMI stick is too wide to fit in some TV. So you can utilise this as an extension, so to speak, so that you can fit it in pretty much any device that you've got, your TV, your monitor, or whatever. Okay, guys, so without further ado, let's get this uh, sort of set up and we'll see what the quality of the game play is like. Let's go. Okay guys, so this is what you're greeted with when you have set up your unit. Um, and obviously a sneak peek here, I have played a few games here and there and it's actually surprisingly quite good. Now it's not perfect, I come across a lot of issues as usual per these things, but compared to the last one I played, this is much improved. Um, and for the same amount of money, um, it's certainly... Um, it's certainly worth buying anyway at this stage. Anyway, let's have a quick look at some of the games that are here. Now, there's actually, according to this, there's 40,000 games overall. This is just the all games section. Now, uh, noticeably, there are no sound effects to the menu. There's no sound. There's no music at all either. Now, I'm not complaining because sometimes it can be a little bit annoying anyway. Um, obviously, you've got your favourites as well. Once you sort of start a game, just press the X button and it can put it into favourites. There's already a lot being tagged here. And there seems to be a setting here. As soon as you play the game, it'll automatically go to favourites, which I'm not sure sure that's that's a good thing. But anyway, that is there. And we'll go back this way. So the, there's a section for four-player games automatically set up for you. 
to whiz through the games, you can just press the shoulder buttons, R1 and R2. You can just go through um, the different sections at the top. Or if you want to go through the games themselves, R2 uh, um, sort of goes through them pretty quickly. R1 just goes to the next section along, um, as you can see there. Um, there are very few options here. So basically, this thing is plug and play. However, even though I say that, not everything's set up perfectly, so you might find games that won't work straight out of the box, might be the wrong emulator setup. However, that brings me to the fact you can change some of the emulation options by pressing start and select. Um, it brings you up this sort of BIOS setting uh, thing. Now, this will vary depending on which uh, format you're playing, um, and it is sometimes a little bit basic. Um, and it, you obviously get the choice of which emulator to run. Now, this is Nintendo 64 disc game. There are a few options there. Now, not every game will work with the same emulator, so you may have to choose a different emulation option here. Some games will work better with others. Some games just won't work that great at all, no matter what you choose. Now, this is probably specifically for um, the arcade games and the... Final Burn Neo stuff, you will probably have to go in here quite often, depending on what game you're playing, because not every game runs in the same uh, sort of BIOS file. So please bear that in mind if you are playing. You will have to go through that. I don't know what the other options are here, um, but that's basically it. There's not a heck of a lot of stuff there. Um, but interestingly, once we play some games, I'll show you some uh, sort of settings. Uh, there is some options to save files and load files with RetroArt, but the you don't have access to a lot at all. Um, so this is, there's tons of Spectrum, there's 5,000 Spectrum games. SG-1000, obviously Sega Mega Drive, Genesis, there's 800 odd there. Um, Dreamcast, there's 47 games there. Now there are some duplicates, but it's probably one of the better ones I've seen in a while. Um, given the fact there's not lots of duplicate games. They can see there's probably a few here, but it does seem to have been... So I cleared out a little bit, maybe. Um, but, yeah, I don't think there's been a lot of testing going on, to be honest, because there's not a lot of games. There's a few games that don't work right out of the box, which just is a bit weird. Game & Watch, not sure why you would want this. Game Boy, 493 games. Hacks games, Super Graphics, there's a few here, but most of the stuff's on PC Engine. There's a few folders there, not sure why there's three. But, yeah, there's 290 games, that's quite a lot. Vextrex. There's 71 games, lots. Odyssey. Uh, that's quite cool. And there's loads of MSX games as well. Final Burn Alpha. This is basically some arcade games. Like I mentioned earlier, you could jump into here and the games might not be perfectly suited. Um, might have the wrong ratio. A lot of the games seem to be defaulted to widescreen sometimes, which is kind of weird. But yeah, this isn't too bad. I might jump into a game quickly just to give you an idea of what it's like. Let's kind of play Ghouls and Goblins. Just a quick bash at a game. I'm, I'm really just going through the games at the moment. Now, if you press X to actually start, well, A, sorry, A to start the playing the game, it does take time to actually get started. That's one of the things I've noticed. It's slow to actually get into the games. The games themselves seem to run fine, though, but just to actually start a game, it does take a little bit of time. Then when you get started, you just press the select button to uh, insert your coin, press start. As you can see what I mean, it's defaulted to widescreen for some reason. I don't know any way to actually change that. Um, so it's not ideal. Um, you see the, the game seems to run absolutely fine, sounds fine. I think you'll find that a lot of the games are fine to play, except maybe some of the tougher stuff. They've included like PSP, um, Dreamcast, and surprisingly they work, work okay, but they're not perfect. Um, but anyway, let's. I'll jump into the RetroArch setting. So if you press the Start and Select button at the same time, this is the only options you've got. You've got Resume, Save State, Load State, Cheats, and Disk Control. Um, they're there, but that's it. There's, you can't go back. There's no further settings. I couldn't find a way to sort of go into more options and change some of the, the sort of shader sets and all that kind of thing. So... What you see here is basically what, what you've got access to, that's it. So it's basic, it's better than the last uh, game stick I had, but still, it would be nice to have access to see a lot more here. But yeah, you want to close content and go back to this, the main screen, you just press that and it goes back. It is it is pretty simple, I guess that's why it's set up like that, as a plug and play sort of game thing. Um, so 
that's fair enough, I get it. If you sort of kick into that, there is more options you press start and select. You've got the emulation settings, you've got video mode. Um, well, this was defaulted to show the boot video, but the boot video is utterly pointless. Um, and that's really it. Your control settings, and that's it. Shut down the system. Nothing else. That's really it. So let's go through. We've got Amiga games as well. Um, not every game worked. Like I tried even with Alien B3D. Didn't want to load it. I suspect maybe the the emulation wasn't it just wasn't good enough. Or there's, you need more memory to play some of these games. But I couldn't find an option to to choose that. Um, so that might hold back some of these games at all. C64. There's nearly five thousand C64 games. Thomas Wave, Dolphin Blue. We'll have a look at some of these games soon enough. Thousands of ST games, Atari 800, Atari 5200, Atari 2600. Then you've got your MAME stuff. There's thousands of games in there. Amstrad, another few thousand games, Atari 7800, 64 games there. Lynx, 103, MSX2, 82 games. Master System, 400 odd. 32X, there's a selection of games here. Uh, family System, is it Famicom? Sega Game Gear, tons there. Neo Geo Pocket, loads. Game Boy Color, again there's loads. NES, there's thousands of games there. Oh, so you see that there are some duplicates here. You see 10 Yard Fight is listed twice and a few other different variations here. You can see there's a few. But I have seen this to be a lot, lot worse. Uh, but yeah, you can see here there's tons and tons of duplicates. So it's probably not quite 40,000 games, but it's not far off. You can clearly see there's lots of games um, in each of these folders here. So really, you would probably never need anything else. Certainly a lot of the, the sort of lower end stuff plays absolutely fine. Arcade stuff, no problem. There are a few things that doesn't play great. PlayStation played okay, but the music was missing. Nintendo 64 was actually alright. It was surprisingly okay. GoldenEye ran, but it wasn't amazing. Nintendo DS, Sega Naomi, just some of arcade stuff. And PlayStation Portable. Not sure why they've included this, because it's, it's probably a little bit underpowered to play it. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to pick and choose some games. I'll run through them, and I'll give you my overall thoughts at the end of the video. Okay, guys, I think we'll probably start off with PlayStation Portable. Um, and the obvious one, I guess, God of War. I mean, this does not run perfectly. Um, but yeah, let's have a quick flash. Okay, as you can see here, you can obviously do your save states here as well, but there are game settings you can jump into to try and make it better, but it's really up to you. You can put the frame skip up to 2 or 3, change uh, some of the options here and try and help, but I just don't think this unit is powerful enough to play some of these games. So not sure exactly why you would want to add these games in the first place. Anyway guys, I just thought I'd jump in there before I play through the games, just to give you an idea of what to expect. I'll play a few more games of PSP and then we'll move over on to the other formats to give you an idea overall what this unit is actually like. Virtual Tennis 3 Aufschlag Federer
vs. Capcom 2. Ready to kick butt. In the end. Let's run. Okay guys, one of the things I mentioned about PlayStation was the lack of music, especially in some of the games like Tekken 3 Alien Trilogy. They played fine, it's just that there was no music uh, included. Now I'm pretty sure you could probably add your own games if you have them um, to these devices, but it shouldn't be too much a problem. Just take the memory card out that's in the device and put it into your laptop, you should be able to do that. But there are games here, but yeah, that is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. Round one, fight!
Okay guys, you can probably hear that there's a lot of slowdown in this game, which is one of the reasons why I like to play this game, because it doesn't always run perfectly on every device, um, especially the sort of lower end, low powered devices. It's still playable, but you can clearly see that it's not running at full speed. Um, but overall, so far, I think you can tell it's pretty impressive for the games it is actually running. Certainly far better than the last unit uh, game stick that I actually bought. Um, so yeah, so far, so good. For the money, I would say, yeah, this is definitely pretty impressive indeed. Commodore 64 stuff was absolutely fine, didn't have really any major issues. Amiga we already talked about was fine, apart from maybe some games, high end stuff wasn't really running. Um, same with that's more arcadey stuff, absolutely fine. MSX, Odyssey, a lot of this stuff run fine, but you have some maybe some controller issues here and there with the stuff, but they seem to run okay. PC Engine, all absolutely fine, super graphics, same. Hacks, Game Boy, Game, Game and Watch. Now, I played some of that, it just seems pointless why you would want that to be there. Same with Virtual Boy, run fine. Pokemon Mini, fine. Um, all this stuff was absolutely fine. So that leads us to Dreamcast. Let's have a look at the performance of Dreamcast. From my memory, I think it was actually running absolutely fine. Let's have a look. Attention all units. Suspect seen heading south. Block all major roads and capture the suspect. So this is crazy, this game sounds absolutely fine, seems to be running good, but I cannot control this for the sake of me, it will not go left or right, not entirely sure what's going on, which is a shame, I'm not. I'm sure there might be a way around it, but it's really not controlling at all for some reason. The jump button's obviously working, um, but the controls are not, kind of, so it's not, it's like it's not recognising the analogue stick con to control. Um, but yeah, it'd be good if we could find a way to actually fix it. You're new, aren't you? If you got any problems, just call out. I'll give you a hand. Your destination for this job is Key West. Make sure you get there on time. Ready? Go! Good morning, New York. 1110 KRWA Super Express Truckers Network. Here's our first song to wake you up. Here we go! Shift up! Shift up! Shift up! Shift up! Shift up! Shift up! Faster! Faster! You're running out of time! Hurry up! Okay guys, so I think that's probably about us. The Sega Genesis stuff, uh, SG-1000. Now, come to Spectrum right enough before we finish up. Spectrum was a bit hit and miss. Some games did not recognise the controllers at all. And with the fact that we've got limited options in uh, RetroArch, we can't go in and remap the controls. But sometimes I actually found by unplugging the, the sort of little... Uh, dongle and then unplug putting it back in again somehow the the controls mapped i don't get it i'm not entirely sure you can plug a keyboard in probably use like a some sort of dongle and a wireless keyboard might actually work and um, but yes spectrum stuff definitely gave me issues 
uh, certainly hit and miss. Um, but overall, I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, if you don't expect too much from the higher end stuff like Dreamcast, PSP, the rest of the stuff seems to play fine. Yep, there's as there is issues out there. Some games won't play. Um, there's some dodgy ROMs in there for sure. But for forty pound off of Amazon, forty thousand games. There's a good selection here. They seem to play pretty well. Plug it into your TV, and you'll be there for hours, weeks, years. It should do you fine, but just don't expect too much from the higher end stuff at all. Overall, it's not too bad. I'll leave links in the description if you're interested in buying one. The exact one I've got from Amazon UK. Um, you can probably get this from anywhere. You probably even get it cheaper from um, the usual places, maybe overseas. But for the best part, this is available, um, especially in the UK or in the US, I guess, or anywhere else. You can pick this up from Amazon, no problem at all. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.